Hi everybody, this tutorial is going to be on uh, using SketchUp to make some clothing. So first off, I'm going to import an image that I can use as um, something to trace. So this is actually a dress form, or a dress pattern I should say. Lay it into my document. So I've imported an image, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tools to trace it really quick. So I'm going to use the arc tool to make some arcs. And all I have to really do is half of the dress. I don't have to do the full thing. And you'll see why, because later on we'll use the follow me tool. And we only need half the dress. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw these arcs. And the last arc. Cool. So we have a dress shape that we've drawn out. I'm actually going to move it over the move tool. First I'm going to zoom out. While I move it, I'm also going to make uh, a couple copies of it. Let's move it over. Looks like I got a little straggler there. Let's make sure I drew this correctly. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to grab it. Move tool and drag it over. Move tool and drag it over. And I'm holding down Alt Option on the Mac. To make multiple copies. And the reason I'm making copies is because in case I make a mistake, I don't want to have to draw this thing a million times. So just got some backups. Okay, cool. So we just basically traced half of the dress image. So you could take a photo reference or whatever. I, I didn't do the, the uh, ruffles at the bottom, but um, you guys could do that later. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to go ahead and grab one of these guys. Just move it over. And let's do the follow me tool with this one. So to use the follow me tool, what happens is you have an image that you've traced, or you have a shape that you've traced, and then what you do is you draw a circle underneath that shape perpendicular to it. Um, or actually, I think that word not, might, might not be perpendicular, but either way, I'll show you what it means. It means that the circle's on the floor, and this thing is standing up and coming out of it. So I'm going to draw a circle on the floor. Following. Okay, so there's your pattern that you drew, and you've got a circle on the floor. Then, what you do, it's quite easy. You can take the Follow Me tool, and the Follow Me tool, you select the face, and so it's really quick that you made, I'll do it again, you select the face that you made, and then you select the circle. So let's put that all back together. So here's what I've drawn, right? I've got a shape standing on the circle, and just repeating what I've said, here's the Follow Me tool. I click on the surface, and then on the ring, and it'll start to tr make a 3D version of it. This is similar to Illustrator's um, Revolve uh, tool. So very, it's actually exactly the same, pretty much. You're revolving. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to let it revolve the whole way, because I could. It would make more like a chess piece, or uh, maybe another kind of shape. This could be an ar architectural shape that you want to use. But I'm going to just do it halfway, and that way it makes something that looks like a dress. So then I'm going to delete the bottom circle, Take a look at what we've got here. Now it's rather wide. It does look like a chess piece, kind of, but it'll be cool. I'm going to go ahead and select it all, and then hit the S for scale, orbit out, do that again, and then I'm going to scale it and make it skinnier, uh, so that it'll just uh, look more realistic. So I'm just making it skinnier. I could make it huge and wide. This could now become a chair. Um, so I'm just taking it down. as a dress. And then what I would do is I'd grab it and grab, get the paint tool and let's say we're going to make them all light pink. So let's take a look and you'll see that you've drawn the shape. From the back it does look kind of simple but from the front it's starting to look pretty cool. Um, what you could do now is you could actually take it a step further and you could draw some um, some lines on here or add a pattern Okay, everybody, now here's the second method for making some clothing using SketchUp. Now, in this case, I uh, put the drawing, my original dress shape, uh, on the floor, and then I did my tracings, everything on the floor. Uh, it just makes this next um, technique a little bit easier just to work on the floor. So anyway, I've got the patterns laid out. I've made copies just in case I make any mistakes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some lines on these. So I'm going to use my overhead view, the top view, to look at my shapes, and I'm going to grab my line tool, and I'm going to go ahead and 
break up the dress body. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I can use these lines to then pull it up in three dimensions and just make this, instead of it being a flat um, shape, it'll be a little bit more complicated. And then it'll have a little bit of texture and it'll play with shadow and stuff a little better. So I've done that. I'm just orbiting around. The trickiest part now is just getting one of these pieces to pop up. So you're going to grab your space bar and grab to switch over to the black arrow. Grab one of the lines you've drawn, switch over to the move tool, letter M, and then you want to drag this going up. The drag, then I'm pressing the up key so it constrains and goes up on the blue axis. So there you see now I'm popping that, that uh, ridge there. So it's three-dimensional, right? And you know, you want to do this subtly in this case because you know this is just clothing. So just to give it a little bit of shape, a little bit of dimension and form. So I'm going to do the same over here. Grab this line. Grab the move tool. Start to drag it and then hold the up key so it starts to go in the up direction. And that's exactly what I want there. So now these are all popped up. So now if I take a look at this from below, you'll see it's got some shade and some life as opposed to that other um, side that we were looking at when it was just flat, right? So we can get it. Triple click it, select it all. Let's add some color, for example, if I was to grab the paint bucket and I'll add a kind of like a lavender, right? And as I add the color, now we take a look at it, you'll see that there is some shading happening in there, right? A little more than before. Now this isn't a complete dress yet, so if we can grab this, grab this entire piece, make a group of this. Now that it's grouped, it's easy to make a copy. Grab the Move tool, hold down Option, and drag a copy over. Now that I've got that copy there, I'm going to use the Scale tool. And with the Scale tool, if you go into the second box, you see there's these three. Let me move this over a little for you. Let me show you the scale tool again. You'll see that there are these three boxes that allow you to drag it left and right. right? The center one, this one when you drag, it's going to scale about the opposite front, which is what we want. So we want to find that middle one there. And then drag this across. Actually, I could go from this other one. And drag across. There we go. Now it's scaled and also flipped. Then I'm going to grab it, move it over, link them up together. And it looked like I think my original drawing was a little off, so there's kind of a weird overlap, but either way, that's looking good. It's got a, it's a dress with some dimension and some form. So then I could take both of those pieces that are grouped, hold Shift, make a component from them. And there it is. And then now that it's a component, I could orbit around, grab my move tool, use the little red crosses on the side of it to pop it up. And we can take a better look at this now. I move it up as well. Take it off the ground. And let's orbit around this guy. And you see that we've, what we've done is given this um, flat dress now has a little bit more life and texture, dimension. You can see from the back, there's some more shading and lines. And if we were to play with our styles, window styles, and take a look at this dress that we're making, we go into Edit Styles and take the edges off, you'll start to see that you are now dealing with a dimensional shape, right? An object that has a little bit more life. So I, hopefully you can see it a little better on your computer. So the edges, you know, you'll see all the lines, but without that, it looks a little better, and if we turn on the shadows, window shadows, bringing this over, and there's a little button here to turn on the shadows. You can increase the shadows and change where they come from, and then we'll see there's more depth than the stress, a little more life to it. So now uh, the third method is, again, we're going to start by going to the top view, so if you're orbiting and you're looking at your sky, make sure you hit top view. So start with top view. Go ahead and drag a rectangle out. And then on top of the rectangle, grab your um, drawing tool here, the freeform 
line tool, and let's go ahead and drag and make some lines. So what we're going to be making here is kind of like a sheet or a blanket, uh, maybe a piece of fabric. So making some complicated lines there. So what I'm really doing is just drawing on top of this flat surface. Then I'm going to grab push and pull and push these guys up. So pushing and pulling, pushing the different sections. And then I'm going to use, oops, maybe we can actually leave that where it was. Then I'm going to use the sandbox tool to make a texture from all this terrain. So you turn on your sandbox tools by going to SketchUp, Preferences, Extensions, and making sure the sandbox is checked. On the PC, that'll be under Edit, Preferences, and then Extensions, or should be under there. If not, please leave me a comment and uh, I can make an edit on here. Make sure it's on. And then make sure you can see this uh, sandbox tools. That would be under View, Tool Palettes, and then checking for Sandbox. Now, for some reason, sometimes this little tool, tool likes to hide. Sometimes it's hiding like down here or behind your tool or over here. So if you have to, sometimes you got to close every other window. I don't know. It's just one of those things that happens. But anyway, here it is, Sandbox tool. Then I'm just going to go ahead and grab what I've just drawn. And I'm going to hit this first button here, which is going to make from contours a terrain. You've got to let it think at the bottom. And then if you take a look around, it's made this pattern that's kind of draping over, we should maybe just say kind of in between all these shapes. And if you click on that and move that on its own, it's its own pattern, or not, it's not a pattern, it's, it's, it's its own shape. And that shape is way more complicated and deep and cool. It could be used for terrain, it could be a blanket, it could be a shirt or something laying on a table, who knows? Just another technique for you for making texture or clothing. I hope these uh, three techniques have been good for you. And uh, please let me know in your comments anything, any suggestions, any things I might have said wrong. Let me know. And if this is working out for you, let us know too. And I hope you're having a great day. Thanks.